Um, bonsoir. I don't know what that means. We're literally seven seconds into the podcast and Eleanor's already said a word that she doesn't know the meaning of. Great. Hi. Welcome back to the pod. You can expect that moving forward. And for in every other episode ever, I think. Um, I'm going to do my makeup again today. I know I said last time I'm not doing my makeup next time. But I've got a party to go to tonight. It's my friend Sophie's Christmas party and I'm so excited. Here's a picture of me and Sophie at my Christmas party. So hopefully we'll get another cute one tonight. I don't know what I'm gonna talk about today, but you've already seen the title, so that's a bit of a spoiler. Even I don't know what I'm talking about. I do have a drink again. I'm sorry, my mum's gonna watch this and be like, why are you drinking again? No, mummy, I've got a Christmas party. I've got a Christmas party, so I'm just, this is a spicy margarita. I am a spicy margarita girl through and through. They are my favorite drink on, on the earth. Can I have a sip? I'm gonna have a sip, but this is gonna be quite awkward. Oh, that's really nice. I've done a good one again. I put salt on the rim. Oh my God, I love a bit of it. This is, what, have I got an elf coming out of my head? Is that what that is? Interesting. Am I the chimney? No, elves don't go down. So what am I? What? There's a mix and no sense. Oh my God, I forgot to say, this is the Christmas special, by the way. Wait, I'm, I'll sit down. This is a Christmas special. I'm actually filming this on the 10th, um, but I, I only just uploaded the other podcast video like two days ago, and I'm so excited about how you guys reacted to the first one that I'm like, I just need an excuse to film another one. So I thought, Christmas special. So that's what we're doing today. I don't know what's gonna be Christmassy about it other than the headband. Maybe that's enough, I don't, I don't know. Maybe we'll, t should we talk about Christmas? Shall that be our first topic? Uh, I love Christmas, obviously. Who doesn't? Scrooge, actually. How effed is that story, by the way? That, that was actually damaging to me as a kid. What do you mean? Three ghosts, one after another, come and haunt you. That's, oh, I used to be so scared of like paranormal stuff in particular when I was younger. I used to have absolute nightmares about um, Bloody Mary. Oh, I remember when Bloody Mary like stories were first going around my school. I was in like, I wanna say year five. I just moved up to middle school. Cause I had the three tier system in school, which people always find interesting. I had primary school, then middle school, then high school. Um, but yeah, Bloody Mary, people always used to talk about it in year five. I remember cause we shared a playground with the older kids, the year sixes. And I'm sure it was one of them that first told me. And then um, I used to have such bad nightmares that I once made my mum cover up the mirrors in my bedroom. Obviously like that kind of stuff isn't real, but I'm more scared of that than like true crime stuff. People always find me and my um, scares and not scares very interesting. What do you, what do I mean by that? Like likes and dislikes, but scares and not scares, you know what I mean? So like I, I'm so scared of needles and blood. Blood makes, like the sight of blood makes me pass out. Well, not exactly pass out. I've never actually passed out, but I go really faint and I have to sit down and I feel nauseous. Like if someone's like cut their arm or something, like I can't stand it, I'm so queasy. But um, like true crime kind of blood, I can watch like reenactment things and stuff like that all the time. I can see like actual crime scene pictures and that doesn't, doesn't, I think maybe because it's a picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I was to see that in real life, I think I would, be, of course I would be queasy. Of course I would. But I'd never wanna see that in real life. Let's, let's touch wood, I'd never see that in real life. But like paranormal stuff scares me way more than like real life stuff, even though I don't think I believe in it. I don't think I believe in ghosts, you know. Well, I don't know. So I once went to a psychic one time and she was so like, she was so dead on with my life that it's really scary. That like, there's kind of no excuse for me to not believe it because she knew nothing about me before I went in there. Discord noise. <laughs> I come back and I look like this, sorry. I checked my phone and then finished my eyebrows. Um, Yeah, I went to a psychic in like summer. It was when I had that breakdown that I talked about in the last podcast episode I was like I was jumping back into all my spirituality stuff around that time I always do when I have a mental health blip 
which you could argue is healthy or unhealthy, but I find comfort in like stuff like that. And I suppose it's not hurting anyone, is it? Oh my God, I'm nearly getting primary in my eyes. No, I have, I have. Ow, stingy, stingy, stingy. Right, one second, I'm off to go sort my eye out. Right, well that wasn't very fun for me. Um, but anyway, as I was saying, went to this psychic um, and she said so much about my life that like she couldn't have known, even if she did know who I was and Googled me. She was telling me things about the people that I worked with, like describing the people, like my editors and stuff. She described them to me, gave me like adjectives. So basically she told me that she was in contact with my gran and grandpa, right? My grandpa died before I was born. My gran died when I was about four. Um, so I was like, okay, I will be interested to hear what my gran and grandpa have to say. And so a lot of the reading, she was just saying certain words to me and being like, does that mean anything to you? Because apparently this was stuff that my gran was telling her and then she was feeding back to me. So it's meant to be kind of proof that she is talking to people, to spirits that know you on the other side. And like all these random words, like she said the name of my boyfriend at the time. And I was like, that's weird, because I don't put that online. So there's no way that she could know that. She like described um, Jack Hodgson perfectly as like, um, like when they were talking about the people that I work with, they described Jack Hodgson perfectly. I was like, I know exactly who they're talking about there. Like there were just, there was a few different things where I was like, that's crazy. You must be talking to my gran, but like how? Anyway. Should we move on to one of the topics? I asked on Instagram um, for some topics. So if you're not already following me on Instagram, you should probably do that because that's where I'm going to be asking for like podcast topics. I might even ask you guys questions if I want to talk about your responses one time. Someone said, what World Cup matches have you been watching? None of them. Do I look like a sport girl? The most I have ever been a sport girl is when I was forced to be in high school. I went to, oh okay, so I went to a private school for two years and it was so different to my public school um, experience. Like in public school, in PE, I was a dosser. I was such a dosser, like I would hang about at the back. I, w I was so lazy, I've always not really liked sport. Um, I wish I did, it looks fun and it's a good way to stay healthy but a bitch can just not get into it. I'm just not interested, I'm not gonna do it. Um, but when I went to this private school, they were a lot more like strict about like, you have to be doing your PE well. And like, they used to make us do 12 minute runs, which I know sounds, <laughs> 12 minutes is not a long time, but when you ain't used to that, it was hell. It was absolute hell. I remember I went to do an induction day at this school before I moved there. Um, and they made me do a 12 minute run on my induction day and I still went home. Sorry, I dropped my phone. And I still went home and said to my parents, yes, send me to that school. What? What kind of crack was I on? None, actually. Like I said in the last podcast, I am not addicted to class A's. Anyway, um, just gonna say that in every episode just to remind my mum that I'm doing all right in London. Yeah, we did the 12 minute run on my induction day at this school and then I never did it again. So actually, I don't know why I'm complaining because I once I actually joined the school for two years after that, we never did it. But like all my classmates that I joined had had to do it for years. And then for some reason, the year that I joined, they stopped doing 12 minute run. And I ain't complaining because absolutely F that, I hated it. You know what? I actually think I might be able to finish my makeup in this episode. I didn't in the last one because it was kind of hard for me to do my makeup and speak and hold the mirror at the same time. But I've put my mirror on my desk today. So I feel like we might be able to finish the makeup gang. Cause I bet that was like really not satisfying. I'm so sorry to have done that to you. but it was like makeup blue balls. Like you watching this video of someone doing their makeup and then they get halfway through and they're like, I think I'm gonna stop now. What? I would have left a hate comment on that video. No, I wouldn't. I've never left a hate comment to my knowledge. Like I might have when I was like a little teenager, but like I don't remember like actively ever writing one, which is why I find them so like interesting to read. <laughs> Someone said, talk about gay things. Okay, that's one of the things I'm best at. Um, Moona, I love Moona. I bought, um, Moona is a band by the way, a girl band. 
and I bought a top from their concert that says Muna made me gay on it and I freaking love it. I'm thinking about calling my cat Muna. Have I told you guys I'm thinking about getting a cat? I'm so excited. I am so excited because I'm, should I tell you this? Should I tell you this or I'm, would I be jinxing it? I'm not gonna tell you, but I'm in the process of doing something that means I might be able to get a cat soon. So, I'm so excited, I'm such a cat girl. I am such, oh, I'm such a cat person. And it's been like absolute torture being away from my cat. I have a cat back home called Pepper. Jake put some pics in of Pepper. I love her with every fiber of my being. That cat, this sounds so stupid, but that cat was there for me at my like worst ever times. If you've never had like low mental health periods and had had an animal around, you won't understand. But like there is something about animals, they know when you're struggling. I don't know. This is see, this is why I think I'm like Phoebe from Friends, because like what the fuck am I talking about? Why do I why do I talk like I'm a witch? <laughs> I think animals can tell when you're sad. It must be like something about the vibrations because I believe in like vibrations and law of attraction and like, they must be able to sense your low frequency. And my cat, whenever, I, sorry, I'm gonna carry on doing my makeup because that's what I'm here to do. Um, whenever I would have like, like, oh, I just remember there were so many times that I would just, this is quite visceral, but I would just start sobbing in bed because that's the kind of depressed I used to be. Like, so I would start just like, sobbing in bed and then the cat would like run into my bedroom she would hear me from a different room and she would run to me and jump straight on me and she would curl up on my chest and it's like you are my best friend <laughs> you are my little therapist like that that thing that little that little fluffy thing was there for me more than anyone like through all my teenage years like, oh, I'm obsessed with her. I am so scared for her to die. <laughs> why do I always, why am I always thinking about this? Why am I always thinking about the future? So basically, let's make it positive. I'm gonna get one. I'm gonna get one of my own, finally. And I'm so excited. I kind of want a black one again, but like, I feel kind of bad because I don't want to feel like I'm replacing her. So I'm thinking about maybe getting a black one with blue eyes. So then it will look like Pepper because Pepper has like greeny, yellowy eyes. So if I get a black one with blue eyes, it'll still be a black cat. Because I feel like I'm such a black cat girl as well. Because I just am a witch. I just am, aren't I? That's one of the things that psychic said. Um, she, like one of the first things she said to me when I walked into that room, she was like, oh, you have a lot of um, Irish ancestry, which I had no idea about, by the way. Like I might have been told at some point, but I'd forgotten it. <laughs> and so she was telling me this in the in the thing, and I was like, oh, okay, well, yeah, whatever. Um, and like apparently my gran was saying that we have like um, witches on her side and like an our ancestry, like Celtic witches. And so I come out of this and I text my dad because it was my gran on my dad's side that she was supposedly talking to. I text my dad and I was like, do we have Irish heritage? And he was like, yeah, why? Well, like, yeah, through your gran. And I was like, oh. I see, and my dad doesn't believe it. Like I get why, because like, I don't know. I, I so get people that don't believe in stuff like that, but I like to believe in it, you know? I don't, I don't know, like if someone was able to prove to me that it's all a load of crap and none of it's real, I don't think I'd care that much. Like I wouldn't be devastated that it's all not real, you know what I mean? But I just kind of like to believe because it's just a bit fun. And I feel like at the end of the day, that's all life is. Just make sure you're having fun and you're on to a winner. So I choose to believe stuff like that. I have so many different tarot decks and like, oh, I got some the other day, moonology cards and it's got like all the moon phases on. Oh, I'm a moon girl as well. Right, well, that sounds a bit weird. I don't, I, I don't moon um, people often. What? Never. I don't know why I said the word often. Okay, the weekend. Oh my God, I might be going to see the weekend next year. I'm so excited. I am in love with that man. I have been. So I was quite a late fan of the weekend. I was quite late to the party. I became a fan at Dawn FM, like last January. No, this this January, the one that we just had. Um, he released that album and that was when I finally like properly listened to his music and I was like, okay, marry me then, fine. Marry me, 
dare you. And he's in London on my mum's birthday, which is so naff. And he's he's actually here the day before my mum's birthday as well. So I was thinking about going to that one and then going to my mum's birthday the day after. Only problem is she lives up north. I live down south. It's a long journey. So I don't really want to do that. Um, but he's doing a date in Amsterdam and I've never been to Amsterdam before and I really want to go. I really want to experience this. She, it looks beautiful there with all the bridges and stuff. I've left my friend in charge of buying tickets and I know damn well he hasn't done it. Um, so if he ever buys those tickets, then that's where I'm going next summer, baby. So freaking excited. I love him. I love the weekend. You wanna know who else I love? Jack Harlow. And I'm sorry about it. I'm sorry about it. That is my guilty pleasure. You know what? Actually, screw the concept of guilty pleasures. 2023, we're not having guilty pleasures. We're just having pleasures. No more guilt. Let me listen to my white boy of the year. There's a new one every year with me. I'm trying to think who it was last year. Oh, Youngblood. Oh, <laughs> that was a moment for me. How did we get there from gay things? That was the last topic I took off my phone. How did I get... I made it very un-gay, actually. I started being very straight towards the end there. Shall I just try and think of something else that psychic said? Maybe I'll make this episode quite a bit about that psychic because that was so flipping interesting. Oh, I then, after I had that psychic uh, reading, I kind of got a bug for it and I wanted to go have another one. So when I came back down to London, oh, so the first psychic I saw was up north. I went to go and visit my mum when I had the mental breakdown. Um, and so I visited one up there, one in Morley. Um, and then um, I had one when I came back down to London, a tarot reading, and it was the most balls thing. I've ever heard in my life. Like, she, I was, I was, I couldn't even play along towards the end. Like, she was just telling me shit that, like, just didn't make sense. She was like, um, oh, I can't even remember the things she was saying because I remember just thinking in my head as she was saying it, like, none of this has anything to do with me. Like, you're literally just feeding me shit right now. Um, so yeah, I don't think that one was legit. Um, there's gonna be so many people laughing at me right now, people that don't believe it at all, being like, oh, neither of them were legit. I believe the first one. I believe the first one was. It's okay if you don't believe it, but I kinda do. Like, what else did she know about me? I wish I could tell you one of them because one of them was so crazy, but it's about where I live. Um, so basically my grand said the name of one of the signs that is like on my street. You know what I mean? It's like a business sign that's on my street. So it's like, I don't know, like I believe, I kind of believe it, I kind of do, sorry. Sorry if I sound crazy, but I do, I believe it. And maybe I'm believing. I was baptized. Oh man, I love that. Is that Chloe? Chloe Ferry? I never watched Geordie Shaw. And I don't know why, because loads of my mates did. It's, it was quite a Northern treasure, wasn't it? Um, but I never got into it really. I don't think my mum would have let me watch that, to be fair. I was much more into The Midnight Beast. Does anyone remember The Midnight Beast? Classic, also. I used to be really into Family Guy when I was, I say used to, it's literally still like my favorite show. And I don't, I couldn't tell you why, cause I don't sit and like piss myself laughing at it. It's one of those shows that don't make me laugh out loud, but it makes me like in my head laugh. You, what? It like just gives me a bit of serotonin, I think. I think that's what I'm trying to say. I really like Family Guy, genuinely. And whenever, like that's one of the questions that I always ask people, like when I first meet them is like, are you a Family Guy person or an American Dad person? Cause that really, that's really important to me. I really need to know that about you before I start forming a friendship with you. And it really upsets me whenever people say American Dad. Like I can get past it. I can move past it. The friend that I'm going to see the weekend with, his is American Dad and I've moved past it. It's taken me a while. It's, it's taken some good hard thinking, some good therapy sessions with myself, some affirmations in the mirror, but I've gotten over it. I can accept that he prefers American Dad, but I can't take too many more American Dad friends in my life. I really can't. I really can't. There's only so many conversations I can have with you about that damn alien. Is that the show that the alien's in? Yeah. Peter? Paul? No, that's that movie about the alien, in it? Look at me Googling, she's a Googler. What was I thinking of? Good morning, USA, American Dad. 
American Dad Alien. What was he called? Roger! Of course, yes. Him. Y'all remember him? Y'all remember him with the big head? And sometimes he would put that wig on and he would look like a sexy lady. Let me find a picture. Oh, holy shit. Holy, why did they make her so sexy? That is so unnecessary. I cannot believe that. They gave that alien a fucking Coke bottle body. Okay. Do your makeup, girl. You've got a Christmas party to go to. Oh, I'm so excited. I love the vibe of Christmas parties. It's so unmatched. Like, everyone's very merry and bright, you know? I don't know what to wear, though. I'm running out of Christmas clothes. Actually, just in general, I'm just running out of clothes because I've put on a little bit of weight lately, and I know exactly why it is, but um, I don't really feel like going on a diet just before Christmas. All the nice food is out right now, so no, no thank you. I'm gonna eat, keep eating what I want until January, and then I, then I might consider having a few salads here and there. But for now, give me that cheese board, girl, because it's Christmas time. Christmas time, mistletoe and wine. Oh, and spicy margarita. Keep forgetting I've got you. Huh. I keep forgetting I've got a Canon. I filmed the first one on Adam's Sony camera. And if you're not a camera nerd, this will mean nothing to you. I'm not a camera nerd either, girl, don't worry. Basically, Canon's shut off every 30 minutes and I don't know why, but Sony's you can keep recording for as long as you want. So why don't I get a Sony? Imagine how long my videos take to film the true crime ones. And imagine how many times I have to literally stand up out of this chair, press the button, sit back down, read my notes again and carry on with what I was saying. I do that every 30 minutes. That's like five times, six times sometimes. Okay, I might need to be a bit more concentrated at this part. I'm about to powder my under eyes. And you guys know there's a lot of crevices there. Oh, I was reading the comments on the last one. I literally read every single comment on that podcast video. I cannot tell you how gassed that made me because honestly, can I be vulnerable with you guys and please don't get mad at me. But like over the last year, I've kind of felt myself not be quite as gassed about YouTube as I once was, as I once was. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I love this job and I always have, and I think I always will. It is the coolest job on earth, but I started it with a passion and a spark and like, oh, I was like such a YouTube stan. But like for the past year or so, it's not even just been like falling out of love with making content. I've just fallen out of love with the platform altogether. I kind of stopped watching YouTube videos, like other people's videos. And I stopped like, I stopped seeing mine. I don't know. I just stopped seeing it as like a creative thing because my videos are so formulaic. I love the true crime side of it, like so much. I love the researching and everything, but the actual like sitting down and talking to the camera part was getting a bit stale. Um, and I'm so sorry to say that, but the reason I'm actually admitting this is because that's gone now. Ever since I've like gotten back into filming second channel videos, I am so buzzing about YouTube 24 seven. Like I do not stop talking about my ideas and how much fun I'm having. Me and my friends are always like, oh my God, this is literally the most fun I have had with YouTube in years. And me and my mates have been doing this for a long ass time, girl, like a long time. Um, and I'm just so giddy. And I think it's because I've finally just accepted that I don't really care how well these videos do. Like, like number wise and money wise like I actually lose money with this channel um because I pay Jake to <laughs> edit the videos and I don't make as much money as from these videos as I pay Jake every month so this channel I, I spend more money making these videos than I do does that make uh, whatever whatever we're operating at a loss and I don't care because I'm having the time of my life and I just want to thank you all so so much for the response to the last podcast video it was freaking insane like I genuinely I barely read any negative comments none are even springing to mind which is crazy everyone was just so sweet can't really remember where I was going with that but I'm gonna go off on a different tangent now like coming off of the numbers and stuff like that, I think it's far too easy in this job to fall into caring about numbers. And then and then I think that's where people lose their passion is when, 
I don't know because I have never cared about numbers personally. The only time I ever feel myself being affected by it is when other people around me talk about my numbers, which, so, oh, I don't know how to explain that. So like, I've told my family that they have to stop telling me my sub count because <laughs> my mum gets really excited. Like this, like she's so proud of me and, and she gets really excited to see me going up to like milestones and stuff. But it got to the point where like every time I went home, she would like remind me what my sub count was. And I was like, mammy, I love you so much. And I am also so excited that I'm hitting these milestones, but this is quite unhealthy. <laughs> like for me to be constantly thinking about this, like about my job as this number, like to be reaching and maximizing and stuff. Like I don't, I don't want to think about my job numbers wise. I want to think about it content wise, what I'm creating, what I'm putting out there, you know? Um, so yeah, we don't really talk about sub counts in the Ellen O'Neill house and it's really nice. Like it's really, really nice. And like having friends like that, that never talk about numbers really. The only time we really talk about numbers is when we're like gassed about it. And I'm sure we would talk about it if one of us was upset about it, but me and my friends don't really get upset about numbers. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say. I, th I just think we're, we're quite lucky that like, I don't know, that we can, that we'd be having fun, you know? Cause I think once you start stressing about stuff like that, like numbers, you drain your own fun out of it. It's the same fun creating that content, whether one person watches it or like one million people watch it. So just enjoy it and don't worry about the aftermath. Who am I giving this advice to? No one asked. Literally no one asked me to, to go on this tangent. But just in case any of you are content creators or like needing a bit of motivation, keep freaking going. Whatever it is that you're doing, whatever it is, whether it's a textile course, keep going girl. If you're doing a plumbing, uh, uh, oh, what, what's, what are they called? When you go, you go after school and you're doing for like two, apprenticeship, if you're doing a plumbing apprenticeship, keep that shit plumbing, girl, because we need plumbers. <laughs> what? No. Right, okay. Come on, get get a grip. Next topic, what are we going to talk about now? Back to my phone. Oh, I'm sweaty. Oh, and I've just seen this picture. That's very cool, because that was just still open on my phone. Pictures of this alien. I quite like that. Oh, my God. Guys, I want to make a song. Have I, have I said that? I don't really tell you guys much, which is why I'm so excited to be doing these podcasts because all of this stuff is just constantly going on in my head. You can tell from listening to me talk that I have a million thoughts a day. So I obviously can't just get them all out to you guys unless I do something like this where I put a camera on and just say everything that comes into my brain. I hope you're enjoying it. I'm really enjoying this kind of content. This is so fun. Oh, let's talk about the law of assumption. If any of you are into the law of assumption, I would be so interested to hear if you have any like good resources that I can look into. Cause I am very new to the law of assumption. I was always a law of attraction girly, as was most people in the beginning. I think that's a lot of people's like first introduction to like manifestation is the law of attraction. Um, but I think the more you look into the more the law of attraction, the more it like it makes sense on a level because it's similar to the law of assumption, but I think the law of assumption kind of cracks it a bit better than the law of attraction does. So the law of attraction basically says that you need to, whoa, hello, what's on this brush? The law of attraction basically says that you need to put yourself on the vibrational level of that what you're trying to manifest, otherwise you won't manifest it. Oh, I just spat, embarrassing. Um, whereas the law of assumption says that if you just assume that you will get it, then you will. It doesn't matter where you are on the vibrational scale. Hiya, uh, it's Scratty Eleanor again. I hope this don't become like a regular thing in the podcast where I have to come in looking scratty a few days later. But basically, when I was talking about the law of assumption, I didn't actually, oh my God, ignore my room. It's like two days before Christmas. I'm wrapping this for my little niece. I hope she enjoys it. Anyways. The reason I prefer the law of assumption is because it doesn't matter what vibrational frequency you're on, you can still manifest, which is why I believe that over the law of attraction, because I was so depressed as I was manifesting such great things into my life. I managed to manifest um, my job, YouTube. I was so depressed as I was starting YouTube. So if as far as law of attraction goes, I wouldn't have been on the vibrational frequency to be able to attract this as my career, which is why I believe in the law of assumption, because I just kind of assumed I would be able to do YouTube. 
as a job at some point. I don't know why I assumed that. I don't know why I was so confident, but I was and I've done it. So I kind of looked back and I was like, I thought it was the law of attraction at the time, but it wasn't. It was law of assumption. And I think if you have like wobbly mental health like I do, law of assumption is a lot more comforting because it it still says that you can do whatever you want. It doesn't matter how you're feeling. It doesn't matter what frequency you're on. So yeah, anyway, bye. So I believe in it. Like I was kind of skeptical at first because I always am with these kind of things. Like even the psychic, I'm like, half of me wants to believe it because I think it's just fun <laughs> above anything else. It's just fun. When I first found the law of assumption, I was a little bit like hesitant and I was like, there is no way that just like thinking I have this thing is gonna give me this thing. Um, and all the coaches that like coach on YouTube about the law of assumption say like, don't like, don't give time to those thoughts. The thoughts that I just voiced. Like don't, don't think about the possibility of failure. Like just don't, otherwise you're pushing it away. Which obviously sounds a bit like, I don't know. I don't know how to word my thoughts on that. But, so basically I was a bit, I was a bit cynical, but then I got my manifestation. And I, I, pretty freaking quickly as well, I got it. And I was like, okay, well, what else can I do with this? So now, I'm gonna start assuming shit. I'm gonna be out here assuming shit. What do you want me to assume about you? Let me know something you want me to assume about you in the comments, because it turns out I'm a witch that can just assume things into existence, because I managed to do that. Maybe one day I'll tell you what I assumed into existence, but for right now, it's mine, it's in my existence and I assumed it because I'm an assumer, pro-assumer, prosumer. I'm a pre-puma. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna do my Ariana Grande makeup. Oh my God. So I text Adam the other day. Is this an okay joke to make? I text Adam the other day and I was like, I think I have reverse body dysmorphia because I was watching our um, makeup video back and I was like, sometimes I kind of look like Ariana Grande in like certain angles. No the fuck you don't, bitch. Oh, I just spat. No, I don't. But like, I was like looking at this video and I was like, why do I genuinely think I look like Ariana Grande right now? Like, come back down to earth, bitch. Like, you don't look like Ariana Grande. Um, but I am gonna do my Ariana Grande eye makeup. You know how she does that like nude cut crease? I literally did it in that video. I've been loving doing that. It makes me feel like my eyes look bigger. Whether it actually makes them look bigger or not is a different thing. But to me, if my eyes feel bigger, then I feel hotter, and I am unstoppable when I got my big hot bush baby eyes. Ooh, putting the word baby with the words big and hot didn't feel right. So we're we're actually gonna move on from that point pretty fucking speedily, shall we? Anyway, manifestation. So the way that I do things with the law of assumption is um I <laughs> Oh, I am gonna sound a bit crazy. I am, but I talk out loud to myself. I do, I do. So, should we say something we want to assume? Um, okay, what do I want to assume? I, I assume that I am gonna get a gift in the next 24 hours. So I, I, say, I say it out loud like that. Like, I assume blank. Um, how else would I say it? There's a few different ways. Um, Oh, I can't remember what I used to do. I haven't done it in a while. I I assume, I intend that, blank, I intend that I will get a gift in the next 24 hours. Uh, what else would I used to say? Um, stuff like, I know that I will get a gift in the next 24 hours. You know what I mean? Just like affirming that to yourself out loud. You're gonna feel a bit silly at first if you're not like into this kind of stuff. I felt so stupid. I was like kind of embarrassed. Like as I was just like, as I was sat doing my makeup, I was like, I had one of these Laura of Assumption coaches on on my YouTube, uh, like open on my laptop and I was doing my makeup being like, I intend, boo, 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 boo. but like it worked. So like, of course I'm gonna tell the girlies about it. So go and talk to yourselves, go crazy. It's worth it. Cause you'll get your manifestation in the end if you're anything like me. Um, so yeah, that was my advice for today. Talk to yourself. I feel like sometimes this makes my eyes look too pale. And I feel like I look like just a big slab of skin. I really have a way with words, don't I, to be honest. Oh, I did my eyeliner, by the way. This is the eyeliner I use and I, I will swear by this till the day I die. I have been wearing this for years now and no other eyeliner. This is the NYX Epic Ink. I personally use brown because I think it just looks cool 
with my hair colour. It's not like a like a very noticeable brown, it's like a black brown. But I think just the softness, um, it, it's just a bit nicer. Especially when you've got paler skin and it's a bit more of like a jarring contrast between like black eyeliner and like pale white skin. I just think a brown is nice, if, especially if you've got like warm toned hair. Anyway, what was I saying? Manifestation. I really believe in manifestation because I think I manifested being a YouTuber. I used to do like, um, like scripting. So I used to wake up every morning and write a page of like, um, things I wanted to manifest and a page of things I was grateful for. Oh, I would love to get back into that. How cute was that era? Oh, well, hello, where's my, I would like to, I'm, I've realized that my eyeliner is a bit wonky and now I, sorry, I, sorry, sometimes I get really overstimulated when there's a lot going on in my mind and I'm like frustrated in my, in my reality. So like, I couldn't find the brush, but my brain was going, eyeliner's not even, eyeliner's not even, but like my hands couldn't find the brush. Oh, oh, it's hard living in my brain, to be honest. I bet I'm like quite jarring to watch, you know. Oh, don't say that about yourself. I need to start being nicer to myself. No, but you know what I think I'm probably like to watch? Have you ever seen Motherland? Motherland is my favorite TV show ever. It's on Netflix in the UK. If you don't have it, use a VPN. Um, it's the best TV show ever made. And the first scene of the very first episode, the main character, Julia, is in the car and she's dropping her two kids off at school, right? And the two kids are being so noisy in the back. One of them's got a bop it and she's going, give me the bop it, give me the bop it. Um, and in the front, like, so her seatbelt's getting jammed and then she gets like trapped in like, um, there's two cars going either way and she gets trapped in the middle and she's like really stressed out. That scene is the most stressful and overstimulating thing I have ever watched in my life. I'm surprised I actually watched that show beyond that scene because it kind of traumatized me, kind of. It's really, I'm really not advertising this show very well, am I? It's a really freaking good show. So funny. It's all about like mum drama from the UK. They're just like loads of primary school mums like from London. Oh, it's so funny. What now? Freckles. Oh, there was a comment on the last video that wanted a tutorial on my freckles, so I'll give you a little one now. So basically what I use is my Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade in the shade Auburn um, because this keeps them on all day because it's obviously meant to like keep your eyebrows on all day and it damn works for that. So I get it on the Anastasia 14 brush. It's like, oh God, look at me, beauty, beauty guru Vera. It's like slanted. Can you see that? Can you see that? It's like slanted. So I get the pointy end. <laughs> My voice was going funny because I was straining that far. Um, I get the pointy end and I just start going like that, like on my face, wherever I fancy a freckle. I tend to like try and follow my natural ones underneath. Like I can see quite a few of them through my foundation. So I'll just go on top of those ones. But sometimes I just be going balls to the wall. I just be going. Sometimes I do them a bit too thick though. And then I start looking like a cartoon character. And I'm like, ah. So then I have to like wipe off the brush. Cause it's usually when there's a lot of product buildup that it makes the brush have like a thicker surface area. Thicker circus area? Is that what was trying to come out of my mouth then? But um, when the product all hardens on the end, it has a thicker surface area, so it makes bigger freckles. So like every 10 freckles, I have to like go and wipe off the, the crusty bead off the end. But yeah, manifestation. I defo manifested YouTube. I wrote in that book time and time again. YouTube is my full-time job. I have like a, a really successful YouTube channel with da 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 da. Like I always used to write in present tense, which is like the main, um, the main rule when you're trying to manifest something is to write it as though you currently have it. Um, so sometimes it just feels like you're lying to yourself though. Cause I, I was like sat there with like 300 subscribers being like, I have a really successful YouTube channel with over a million subscribers. I mean, look at me now, shit works. Shit works. And I, oh, I'm too close to the microphone to be shouting like that. I'm so sorry. Headphone users, I'm so sorry. So yeah, I manifested YouTube. I manifested my boyfriend uh, that I, <laughs> that I broke up with at the start. I, um, but like I didn't realize it was him. So like I had been manifesting a boyfriend for like six months, but the way that I did it was like, I would write in this book, 
a lot of like um, just qualities that I wanted in a partner. So like someone that was supportive of my work, someone that made me laugh, someone that was this and was that, da, 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 wrote all this down in the book. And then I ended up getting a boyfriend, like not long after. It cut me off again. And I don't know how much I managed to say, but basically I was manifesting ex-boyfriend. Oh, uh, he is actually my ex-boyfriend, but I meant it more like as in ex as in like, um, like placeholder, you know, like X, Y, Z. Can you tell that I don't really like think before I speak? Ever. <laughs> Literally never once in my life. It's more fun that way though. I was manifesting placeholder boyfriend. Like I wasn't manifesting a particular person, but just like a person that I thought I would get along really well with. Um, and then I eventually got with my boyfriend. And then like a few months later, I was like reading back this book and I was like, holy freaking hell. I have manifested this exact man into my life. It was really cool. It was a really cool moment to like be like, shit, not only have I manifested my job, I've manifested my boyfriend as well. That was crazy. I manifested living in London. I manifested, I literally manifested this exact apartment. I wanted a, a high rise like skyscraper apartment with like big open floor to ceiling windows with a view of London. Holy, holy moly, holy freaking moly. Where does that saying come from? Why do, holy moly. Does the mole have holes or is he a Christian mole? Hmm. Thrilling stuff takes place on the Ellen and Neil podcast, isn't it? We need to stop calling it that because it's not actually the Ellen and Neil podcast. But it could be. It could be if any, if any platforms maybe wanted to pick it up. Actually, I don't know. Would I take this to a different platform or do I just enjoy doing it as YouTube videos? I don't know. I like being able to do things as well. And I like being able to like, feel like I'm actually talking to you. Whereas like if I was in a studio with just a microphone and headphones on and I wasn't talking to anything in particular, I wouldn't feel like I was having a conversation with you guys. I'd feel like I was just recording me and then throwing it out there, you know? Whereas this actually feels like, cause I'm looking at you and I'm like addressing you. I, and I know it's gonna go out to you and I'm gonna read the comments. This feels like a two-way conversation. Even though a podcast would literally be the exact same thing. Like, do you get comments on podcasts? Why don't I know that? You can tell I'm not much of a podcast girl. Like every now and then I go through like podcast phases. What are some of my favorite podcasts? Oh my God, I love Emergency Intercom. Enya and Drew are so funny. I have always loved Enya for years. I, I love her. I love her. Calm down. Um, I listen to Emma's occasionally, um, um, I'm not really that much of a podcast girly, to be honest. I like some of the true crime ones. I listen to like the occasional true crime one actually, mainly like BBC Sounds ones, um, cause a lot of them are quite short and a lot of them are on like particular cases. I don't know, I've just always had a bit of a thing for BBC Sounds like true crime stuff. You know what, that's one thing about me. I really love the way that British media does true crime. I don't know if it's just because it's like comforting to me because I used to watch like channel four, channel five true crime documentaries growing up. So like they just have that really like nostalgic, like homely factor to them. Weird, weird to say that about a murder documentary love. What kind of childhood did you have? Angela Neal, why were you putting those on in the living room when I was like 12? Actually, no one's allowed to judge my mum for putting those shows on when I was younger because look how it's ended up. She literally gave me a job. She said, here, get learning this kind of stuff early and it might be useful one day. And I says, all right, love, will do. Did, did you know she bought me the KSI? KSI? I meant CSI, Crime Scene Investigation. <laughs> no, KSI. <laughs> um, but anyway, she bought, my mum bought me the CSI, Crime Scene Investigation, Wii game when I was 12 years old. <laughs> the Wii game, brother. Why was my mom actually setting me up to probably become like a murderer? Like she's lucky that it it went this way and I became the investigator rather than it going the other way and me actually like taking ideas from that kind of shit. Like, sh yeah, she's lucky I turned out mentally stable because Jesus, did I turn out mentally stable? Well, at least I'm not a murderer. I feel like that's, I feel that should be comforting to all of us. I know a lot of you are mentally ill as well. I love you. 
I love you so much, but you know, you know, you probably are a bit. If you're watching this, you, pr you probably are a bit. And I think at the end of the day, we're not murderers. Girl, me and you, we're doing fine. We're literally doing fine. We're not serial killers. We're not fraudsters, I hope. What have you been up to? Put the fraud down. This isn't you. This isn't you. Shut up. L literally, what goes on in my brain? Manifestation? <laughs> what else do I have to say about that? I've never watched The Secret. I find it boring. I've tried a couple of times. I tried to read the book and all. You Oh, one thing about me, I can't read. I can't, I can't. All that schooling and I can't read, it bores me to tears. I can't and I really wish I could because I think reading is so sexy. Jack Edwards, what's up? What's up girl? What are you doing next Thursday? Sorry, I love him. He's like, he's, oh, we miss him. He's one of my closest like YouTube friends. We miss him. He's been traveling for too long. If you didn't see the Paris vlog where we went to go and visit him when he lived over in Paris, he lives in New York now and he's living his best life. Like we get a message in the group chat every now and again of like some crazy New York story that he has and we're like, Neh, wish I could be you. He's really freaking cool. What was I saying? Oh, also Steph Bora. I love her with her little books. She's so cute. I love the booktubers. I watch so many booktubers for a bitch that's never read a book. No, I've read a couple of books actually. I read um, Hetty Feather or something by Jacqueline Wilson when I was like 11 on holiday with my dad. Something about getting adopted. That's all I remember. I also read a book once called We Were Liars. Cat couldn't tell you what happens in that. I've read the first few pages of Evelyn Hugo husband timeline or whatever that's called. I read a bit of that on the plane once. Yeah, I went on a plane once. Yeah, I'm a jet setter. Yeah, I'm a traveler. Oh, I imagine I'm gonna travel quite a lot next year. Do your makeup, girl. Hopefully I am gonna travel quite a bit next year though, cause already I'm thinking about Amsterdam. Me and my friends, uh, like Adam, Jake, Jordan, and hopefully Jack Edwards, if he's back long enough. We're thinking about going to Venice, uh, which would be really fun. And of course I would vlog that. It'd be just like the Paris vlog, which I love. That's one of my favorite videos I've ever done. I love doing content with my friends. It's literally the most fun thing in the world. Um, what else, where else am I going? I'm going to Florida in April for, can I say? Hold on, I'm gonna text my connection to this event and ask if I'm allowed to say that I'm going. He said, yeah, sure. I don't see why that's an issue. So again, I've got approval. I'm going to create a clash uh, in April. It's a boxing event in Florida. And I'm really excited because I'm gonna see some people uh, punching and, and ducking. Some of my favorite things, I love duck. A duck hoisting wrap. I'm literally so sorry to like vegetarians and vegans. That was, that was unnecessary from me. I didn't have to say that. Back to manifestation, again. <laughs> I would say one of the most important things to do if you're trying to manifest anything is to remain grateful. Because if like the law of attraction is real, which I still believe there's like some basis in that, even though I'm more of a law of assumption girly these days, I think uh, gratitude is one of the most um, important steps of the law of attraction because it does just put you on a better vibration. Um, and I, I believe in vibrations at the best of times, even if it's got nothing to do with like law of attraction, even if you can't attract that way, I still believe that like, well, it's like science, isn't it? It's like science. Okay, girl. No, but that we're all constantly always vibrating at a frequency and hello? Did you see that? That brush tried to attack me. I think one of the best techniques to stay grateful is to, um, like I used to do, write out in a notebook every morning. Cause I used to wake up on, on like days that would have been bad days. Like if, I don't know, if I was just in a bit of a shit mood one day, I would sit down at my book and write out a full page of things that I was grateful for. And I would immediately feel better. Like it just subconsciously does something to you, which is why I believe in frequencies and like vibes and stuff like that. I believe in vibes. I'm a walking ick. Like, please don't unsubscribe because like I'm actually, I'm actually begging on my knees at this point, please don't. I don't know, I think doing that first thing on a morning really used to put me into a good vibe and I should start doing it again. 
But to be fair, gang, this is what I said earlier about like how whenever I'm going through a mental health blip, I really lean into like spirituality because I think those practices do just kind of help you raise your vibe and therefore raise your mood. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Basically, what I'm trying to say is gratitude is the most important thing and starting your day with a practice that establishes your gratitude is the best foot that you could start the day on. Like, literally, there is no better feeling on this earth than feeling grateful for what you already have. And it can even be, like, the tiniest little things ever. Like, oh, um... You, uh, you, um, what, um, you can, I, you do... <laughs> Me when I'm put on the spot. It can be like, oh, I'm really grateful that um, when I woke up in the middle of the night and reached over, I had a full glass of water next to me on the nightstand. Like the tiniest little things that you wouldn't like consciously acknowledge in your head that have made your life good and easier. But that's just like, that's a nice little lucky thing that happened to you in the middle of the night. And if you properly acknowledge that and be like, you know what, life is good to me sometimes. I woke up in the middle of the night and I just had a glass of water there. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to go anywhere. If you feel that grateful about the tiny little things that happen in your life, you're gonna feel so just happy all the time. And that's one thing that I've really trained myself to do in the last couple of years. And it's been life changing. Like I, I was texting my friend the other day. I can't remember what we were talking about, but it was quite a, a naff situation like something had been cancelled or or could have been cancelled or we might be missing something and I, I was like oh it just gives us chance to like do this whatever and he texts back and he was like I, I love how positive you are all the time about everything and I was like I don't even try to do it at this point I've genuinely trained myself to do that because I always used to be so negative just like innately I was just a really negative person for years I think a lot of it was to do with my mental illness like like depression and stuff just of course it makes you quite a negative person you're just sad all the time and you're always seeing the down in things um but I I, I would like actively pull myself up on it if I notice myself being negative or like focusing on sorry I just stopped talking to draw a line on my eye if I found myself focusing on negatives, I would be like, hold on, rework this in your brain. And I would like make myself think of something positive to outweigh that negative. So I remember one of the first times I ever did this like consciously in my brain, I'd missed the train to London one time from, this was when I still lived in Yorkshire and I'd missed the train to an event in London. And I used to get so stressed. One of my biggest anxiety triggers is being late which I realized the other day kind of stems back to me in college because if I was even slightly late for a lesson, I just wouldn't go at all because the anxiety of walking into a quiet classroom where everyone was already sat down and listening to the teacher was too much for me. I, that made me way too anxious. So I think now my anxiety about being late to things comes from that therapy sesh. Anyways, so that's what I mean. It's like, it's it, it, I, I understand where it comes from so I don't let it bother me as much these days. But back then, when I missed this one particular train, I really let it bother me. And I like rang my mum and I was nearly crying and she was like, darling, just get the next train. Go and sit at, at Starbucks, get yourself a nice drink, get the next train. Literally nothing, nothing bad has happened. You're just stressed that you you were late and you missed it. Like, but just take that stress out of your head. You can get the next train. Like, yeah, it's a little bit of money. You have to pay for a new ticket, but that's it. And it's like, yeah, like instead I now get to go and sit in Starbucks for like half an hour and chat to my mates in group chats while I drink a nice coffee. Actually, this is really good. Actually, I'm glad this happened because now I get my white iced mocha. You know what I mean? Just think something positive about it and really try and outweigh the negative. And if you pull yourself up on it enough times, it'll become second nature. Has to me. Well, at least it is right now while I'm mentally well. <laughs> Who knows where my mental health is gonna go. Hopefully nowhere. I'm not gonna come off my antidepressants again. Oh, shall we talk about that? <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I, I genuinely, so sometimes I'm like, is this too personal to talk about on the internet? And then I'm like, do you care though? And then it's like, no. Um, I was on antidepressants, I am, I am right now. 
Um, but I was on them at the start of the year. That's I think this is what contributed to my mental health blip in summer. I kind of came off them in spring and I was doing okay. And then I had my mental health blip and it was the first one where I wasn't medicated. So it was a really bad one and now I'm medicated again. <laughs> it's okay. Antidepressants are a funny one for me because I am a big supporter of if you're struggling don't be fucking scared of medication. I don't like it when people badmouth like antidepressants and stuff because like, what's the point in living miserably for years and years and years, trying to do it without medication and failing if you can just do it with medication and be happier quicker. I know it's not the most ideal situation to be on medication and sometimes I get a bit stressed that I am. I'm like, oh, I really wish I didn't need this to function. But at the end of the day, life is so freaking short that fine, just put me on, put me, put me on it, and and let me have a good time, and I will, I will. Simple as I am, I am right now. You know what's a really good Christmas present idea? Mascara. For any makeup wearer, you run out of mascara all the time because it's something that you use every single time. Mascara. I always get my sister mascara for everything, for Christmas, for birthdays because she wear it every day and it's something that you always have to repurchase but you never really want to repurchase because like that's just like 11 12 pound that like i just have to spend every month like no so i think it's a really good present i love getting people like uh refills of stuff that they use all the time as a christmas present because i love receiving that like that's such a useful present you got me a thing that you know i use and you know i run out of often so then i don't have to go out and buy another one I have a backup. Thank you so much. I owe you my life for that. That's amazing. Thank you. Oh, by the way, this is the best mascara on God's green earth. And I will stand by that till the day I die. It's the Hourglass. Caution. Extreme length mascara. It's amazing because I have like really quite like big eyeballs. Basically, when I blink my eyes, my, my eyelashes like press on this bit of my eye and I always get mascara imprints under my eyes and this is the only mascara i have found that minimizes that even this doesn't fully get rid of it i am waiting for the day that i find a mascara that never imprints under my eyes haven't found it yet but this is the closest i've come to it so if you have that problem where your mascara imprints under here hourglass caution extreme length mascara go get it uh. no i'm not gonna burp in every podcast episode no no no, sorry, I have just had my dinner before this. That being said, I've literally been filming for like an hour. This is the longest podcast on planet Earth. Shall I be done now? Oh, I literally am. This is the finished look. I might put lipstick on. I might not. You can't force me. You can't make me do anything. Woo, we need the spray. This is the best one ever. I've I've used this literally since I was like 14, 15. Beom, 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 beom. And with that, I'm off. I hope you enjoyed this podcast because I certainly enjoyed making it. Uh, let me know what other like topics you want me to talk about in future podcasts. And I'll see you in episode three. Merry Christmas. I hope you had a really good one and thank you for spending it with me in this video. I Oh, look at us spending Christmas together. Our first Christmas together. Anyways, bye. Ah, love you so much. Bye.